Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture video. In today's episode, I'll share with you what is localizability with an example in Go. So what is localizability? Localizability is the combination of internationalization and localization. Localization refers to the adaptation of a product, application, or document content to meet the language, cultural, and other requirements of a specific target market. This is also known as a locale. This is the definition that is coming from the WC3 that was made available in December 2005. Localization in English is typically written as L10N, and what that means is the number of letters between the L and the N of the English word localization. Localization not only includes translating the user interface and documentation, but also relates to numeric, date, and time formats, currency, icons, and many more things. So what is internationalization? Internationalization is the design and development of a product, application, or document content that enables easy localization for target audiences that vary in culture, region, or language. Similarly to localization, internationalization also is referred as a small word, specifically I18N. As you may imagine, that means the numbers, the 18 means the no number of characters between the I and the N in the word internationalization. With all of that being said, let me show you an example in Go that demonstrates internationalization and localization and therefore localizability. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. The example that I'm going to be showing you is just a quick localization example of a string that happens to be supporting plural and is implementing the English and the Spanish translations. So, for example, I have here that says uh, you're buying a cookie, and if I put it in Spanish, in English, you will see it in English. And similarly, if I change the count, you will see how it actually changes to the plural version. So let's jump into the code and we're going to be building this from scratch. What I have here as the beginning of this example is just a simple implementation using the flag package that we're going to be using for passing in some arguments to this program. So if I run the, bag, the binary, well, I run the file, you will see that it's printing out you're buying zero cookies, which is literally this. So there is no localization, there is no international internationalization or anything like that. If I put a count, it will be just printing out the values as is. So what are we going to be doing for supporting localizability and therefore inter internationalization and localization? We're going to be following the instructions that I added in the readme. So first of all, we need to import these three packages. We're going to be using uh, these three packages for setting up the data that we need. For now, just because I want them to update the go mod, we can do a go mod tidy. And it's going to be downloading all the packages that we need. After that, we are going to be uh, installing this Go I18N tool that is literally used for creating a translation file that we're going to be using for translating from English to Spanish and adding support to plurals and other things. So we install it using the Go install. One thing that I keep in mind is that I'm using the dir env tool. So my binaries are actually installed locally to the path that I have right here. So I have uh, go intent. You can ignore this one. It's one example I was trying to do before, but it doesn't matter. So go i18n is the binary that we're going to be using. Next, we are going to be copying this, and I want to explain to you why we're doing all of this. But I want to have the boilerplate that we're going to be using in the first place. So, so now that we have installed the binary, we have this go generate, and this go generate, what it's going to be doing is reading this file. Uh, determining and finding a few translatable strings and creating a file that we can use for translating afterwards. Now that we have that, uh, we're going to be creating an empty file called active.es.toml, which is using the toml format. And as you can see, this one is empty, empty, and that's pretty much what we need. So, what are we going to be doing next? What we need to do is localize or our international internationalize the strings that we have right here so what we have to do is take this we call it count um or let's say uh, bind and we are going to be creating a bind string we don't know how but we what we need to what we're trying to do is get this in a translatable way in order to do that we need to define uh, using the 
I-18 package that we implemented in Porter right here. We need to define a bundler, we need to define the language, and we need to define a message that we're going to be using for translating and generating the file that we're going to be literally translating just in one moment. So for doing that, we're going to be getting rid of these blank imports and now it's complaining, that's fine, don't, don't worry about it. We're going to be taking and adding um, configuration for setting up the, the bundler that I was just mentioning. And for doing that, we need to use bundle or define a bundler and then I18 new bundler. The language that we're going to be using will be English and English will be the one that we're going to be using as the default at the beginning of our, which indicates that all the strings that we're using and defining in our program are written in English. After that, we're going to be registering a bundle register. Okay, let's see. Let me do, let's do something. Let's comment because I want to get the auto completion and sometimes it complains. So bundle register on Marshall func and we're doing this so we can on Marshall the data that we're going to be reading from the file so so far everything seems to be working this uh, for whatever reason is complaining it's, it's missing the func so right here on Marshall func uh, and then we do uh, compile everything is compiling so everything seems is working as expected now the biggest important thing about this is actually define the localizer as well as the data that we're going to be needing for um, the data that we're going to be needing for translating the data that we need to translate and print that out uh, in 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 the terminal in this case or in the standard output rather so now that we have the localizer we created a bundle we need to define the message and this is where it gets a little bit uh, tedious and uh, to be honest with you it's one of those things that probably you're going to be feeling um, not really excited about this in particular in go so we have a uh, message um, I'm sorry, another message. It will be a localized config. And we save it. We can get rid of comment this out for now. What the localized config is going to be doing is we're going to be defining a default message. Default message. That is again an in message. And what this defines is an ID. And all of this is going to be making sense by in cookies. In a moment when we see the generated file. We're going to define a one and a plural, or rather an odd there. So the way i18n, the package, this package in particular works is that in order to make it work, you need to uh, define a template, a Go template, and it's, it can be as complex or as simple as you want. So for now, we're going to be saying, hey, for one, you're buying cookie, cookies. All right, you know, no, this doesn't make sense because you're only buying only one, right? So if we're doing multiple, you're buying, and we're going to be using a plural count, which is a special uh, field in the template that is part of this package and indicates cookies. So we're at dot, and we got a plural count, and this will be the count that we have above, which is in the argument right here, okay? <clears throat> After that, we can print out the value in the printf as we click. So let's add a string empty right there. So let me scroll down a little bit so you can see. So with this, if we run it, what is going to happen is that it's going to be printing the default values. If we run uh, main.go, it's going to be printing whatever, nothing really changed because obviously we didn't create a translatable file yet. For doing that, we need to go go generate, run go generate, and this is where this instruction comes in. What's happening is that it's taking, uh, it's using as the main language like I defined here English, and this is going to be reading all the definitions that are calling this uh, 
localized config so if we define multiple localized config variables or we're calling localized config multiple times what it's going to be doing is generating entries in this uh, dictionary that is the tom tumble file that we're going to be used for translating in a moment so let's run your code generate this just generate a file called active n which is the english translation so if you got active n you will notice that we have a buying cookies entry that defines the uh, this message that I defined right here the ID is the same as the one that is indicated in the file and also the two ways that we're going to be translating into Spanish so if we follow the instructions that I have in the readme so we're going to be taking the active.env tumble file we're going to do moving it or copying it or merging it into the active s for a Spanish file with that what is going to happen is that now the active ends should have um oh it's right here it's uh yep it's actually it generated the file translate those the es and this is the file that we're going to be using for translating so the way it works is when you're creating the file the original file the end the for english file you need to create uh merge it into another file that we will call translate in this case and when you're done with that you have to move with that file to something called active.es.toml so we go for the you uh estás comprando and for you estás so i'm missing the accent right here you get the idea so you're buying one cookie you're buying multiple cookies so with that we have uh, this one translated we're going to be doing we're going to be renaming this into active dot s just for the sake to indicate that uh, the tumble is right there so if we uh, do an active s tumble you will notice that is the content is right there so what we need to do next is do so we need to load the two bundle files so load message file active and tumble and load active as basically we're loading the translation so we can use them after we're calling uh, those instructions right here so we compile this thing it runs if we do a got run main that go now we can put count two and three and then everything needs to be it seems to be working however we're missing one thing and we're missing is we are using only en as the language so if we change it to es what is going to happen is that it's going to be running the translation that we used before so we are running uh, we decided to call it es which is spanish and if we run this again you will notice that uh, now is using the obviously the Spanish uh, translation but I want to show you what I show you in the beginning with the final implementation what we're going to be doing is adding a new uh, variable called a string and we're calling lang and lang we'll call it n language to use and we can pass down this one here lang and if we run this like so we can say hey run it in English um, actually uh, of course I miss bar string bar long string so English or Spanish and we can indicate number one or number two or whatever combination we want to use so this is the current state of localizability in Go uh, with the packages that are available everything is extremely manual and although possible if you're planning to use uh, localizability or you're planning to localize or internationalize your programs is going to take you a little bit i didn't mention currency or date formats uh, because that's another big topic that is kind of a, a bit convoluted and it takes a little bit of time to implement 
However, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description as well that you can refer to if you want to use an example for translating currency between different languages and between different locales. Hopefully all of this works if you are planning to implement localizability in any of your projects. Again, this is not as easy as previously we previously covered in other episodes, but hopefully this should help you and is useful for you if you're planning to do something like this in the future. As usual, thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. Take care and stay safe. See you.